look at complex powers and roots. Um, so we'll start with complex powers, uh, and we're going to assume that you know how to multiply complex numbers in polar form, which was covered in the previous video. So if you haven't seen that, um, go and check that out. So to do powers, I want to take uh, a number z is r cis theta, that form, and I'd like to raise it to the nth power. So I'd like to do z to the n equals what? Uh, and to start, I'm going to, let's just do like z squared, right? Look at it like a nice easy one, z squared. So this is just equal to r cis theta times r cis theta. And according to our multiplication rule, if I want to multiply two complex numbers, I multiply the moduli and I sum the angles. So this turns into r squared cis 2 theta. Okay, what if I want to do z cubed? If I want to do z cubed, I can split that into um, r cis theta times r squared cis 2 theta. So this turns into r cubed cis 3 theta. So you are, are probably seeing the pattern here, right? Um, we're not going to prove this now later in the year. If, uh, if you're in my class, I'll probably have you prove it with induction. But um, for now, we can look at this, see the pattern, and say, oh, hey, I suspect that if I want to do z to the n, it's probably going to be equal to r to the n cis to the n theta. Um, and that is, in fact, what it is, uh, because you can just use this argument, right? You can say, well, every time we can just take, like, z to the n minus 1, uh, and then multiply it by, by z to generate this. Um, this is called de Moire's theorem. Just like in case you're interested and you hear people discussing the, uh, the, the subtleties of de Moire's theorem at uh, the local coffee shop. Um, I don't know why they would be. But yeah, de Moore's theorem. So we want to kind of use this now and try to go backward and say, okay, we have powers. Let's see if we can use roots. And you say, well, if I have a root, a good guess might be that z to the 1 over n is equal to r to the 1 over n uh, cis of theta divided by n, right? Since this is literally we're just like taking de Moore's theorem and applying 1 over n power as the power, right? Since this is the same thing as uh, the nth root of z, right? So good guess, but we can test it, right? We can, we can try to check. We can say, well, if this is true, that means that uh, z to the 1 over n raised to the n should be equal to just z, right? So let's check. If I do z to the 1 over n to the n, I'm supposed to raise this uh, modulus to the nth power. And then I'm supposed to multiply the angle inside by n. So I get n times theta over n. So sure enough, this gives me r cis theta, um, which kind of confirms that this, this works, right? This is the opposite uh, of, of de Moore's theorem when we're doing roots. But the question that arises here is, is it the only root? Because I can take number like 16, right? And 16 actually has two roots. It has positive four and negative four uh, square roots. So I want to try to see, am I missing any roots here? And like, how do I find all of them? So we're going to look at specifically, we're going to look at an example of z equals 8 cis 60 degrees. I would like to find all cube roots, all um, cube roots of z. So let's apply what we just said and say, okay, well, uh, the cube root of z should be equal to 8 cu uh, cube rooted cis of 60 degrees divided by 3, right? This gives me 2 cis 20 degrees. Wonderful. So let's let's take a quick look at what this is doing, right? So I have my complex plane. And the number 8 cis 60, let's say, is like here-ish. 2 cis 20. And I'm just going to, the, the complex numbers don't really have these lines. I'm just going to draw it because I think it's a little bit easier to kind of see the angles if you have a line there. So I'm going to draw 2 cis 20, which is probably going to be like here. And by taking 2 cis 20 and multiplying it by itself, you know, three times, 2 cis 20 times 2 cis 20, first we stretch out the modulus, right? So it, it turns into 4 cis 40. So it gets a little longer, and we rotate it 20 degrees. Then we do it again. Make it twice as long again, rotate it another 20 degrees, we end up here. But 
is this the only complex number that we can um, cube and kind of rotate and extend through the complex plane and end up in this spot? And you might be suspicious that the answer is no, because complex uh, or because polar numbers, right, um, are not unique. Um, and if multiplication in the complex plane is just kind of rotation polar wise, uh, then it would suggest there may be other roots to find. So how could we find these? Well, what I could do is I could say, um, let me take uh, basically the same exact number, right, 8660. But this time, let me write it as, um, I'm going to find, I'm going to say z is equal to 8660 should also be equal to 8 cis 420, right? Because if I'm just add 360 degrees to this, I rotate back to the same spot. So these two numbers are the same complex numbers, right? Same number. So now let's do the cube root of this new version of z, which is the same number. I get cube root of 8, okay? And then cis of 420 degrees divided by 3. And a very interesting thing happens. The 2 stays the same. But now I get cis of 140 degrees. So this says that if I go over to 140 degrees, which is going to be like, I don't know, here-ish, maybe around this spot. Oops. Then if I take this and I say, OK, let's rotate it, um, multiply by itself. So we uh, get 4 cis 280, right? So 4 cis 280 puts us over here. And then we do it again, we end up in the same spot, right? Starting from a different point and kind of rotating by a different amount, we end up here. Uh, it's just the same one every time. Okay, so let's see if we can find more, right? Let's do it again. Um, let's this time do uh, change z into being um, 8 cis of 780 degrees. And then do the cube root of that. So I'm going to get cube root of 8 again. Then I'll have cis of 780 degrees divided by 3. And that's going to give me 2 cis 260. So again, we end up down here. And we find another root that we can rotate through and get this uh, same value, right? And then if I keep going, what happens? Well, the next number that I get, um, I would have 8 cis... Uh, 1140. And if I do this, the cube root of 8 cis 1140, um, I get cube root of 8 cis 1140 divided by 3. Um, and this just gives me 2 cis 380 degrees. But 380 degrees is just, this is the same thing as 2 cis 20 degrees, right? So now I'm back to where I started. So this one I can ignore. Okay. So we have found the roots, okay? Now, the thing that happens here that is, is really, really nice, really pretty, is that if you take the nth root of something, you will always get n roots, and they will always be evenly spaced throughout the complex plane, right? And the reason that happens is because of this special property that complex numbers have where multiplication is a rotation in the complex plane. And because of that, I can end up in the same spot up here by starting in three different spots and rotating. Um, you know, each one of these rotates by a different amount, but each individual one rotates by the same amount each time, right? If I 2 cis 20, we rotate it by 23 times, we get here. 2 cis 140, we rotate by 143 times, we go boop, 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 and end up there. Or I did that wrong, it's 140, then 140. Um, and similarly, 260, right? We're over here, 260. We rotate by 260 degrees, and we end up like over here. And then we ro uh, rotate by 260 again. And we end up over here. So it's it's a really neat property of um, the complex plane to, that we get these roots. So takeaways here: um, if you are doing the nth root of a complex number z, there will always be n roots. complex roots, evenly spaced. Through the complex plane. And so what this means is you only need to find one. 
if I go back here, right, I can kind of reverse this and say, okay, I want to find, you know, all the cube roots uh, for the number Z is 8, 6, 60. I can find the first one, right? The first is going to be 2, cis 20 degrees. Once I found that one, I say, okay, well, I'm looking for the cube root. So there should be three roots, right? If there are three roots, what must those roots be spaced by? Well, they're evenly spaced through the complex plane, which I apparently forgot to write the word plane here. Um, then that means that there should be 360 degrees divided by 3, 120 degrees. There should be 120 degrees separating each of the roots. And then I can just go and write down the other two. Say, okay, well, this is going to be 2 cis 140 degrees and 2 cis 260 degrees, right? So you don't even have to go through this whole process that we did here. Once you have one of the roots, you just get the others, right? So this is an interesting one because we know uh, that the fourth roots of 16, we can think of a couple, right? So I know 2 to the 4th is 16. I also know negative 2 to the 4th is 16. So I can think of 2 right off the bat. Um, but this method that we came up with is suggesting there should actually be two more roots for uh, the real number 16. Um, and those roots might be, com or definitely will be, complex. So let's use our system to, to figure this out. Um, so 16, right? I, always a good idea to graph these things. 16 is over here. Right, so this makes an angle of zero with the complex plane. So I can write this as uh, z equals 16 cis zero degrees. Right, and if I'd like to find the fourth root, uh, I only need one. Right, I'm going to find the fourth root of z, which is going to be two cis of zero divided by four, which is zero. So I get two cis zero degrees. Okay, this gives me my first root of 16. To find the others, I say, well, there are four roots. They are evenly spaced. Therefore, they are going to be 360 degrees divided by four is 90 degrees apart from each other. And I can then write down the next three. I can say, okay, it's going to be two cis 90 degrees, two cis 180 degrees, and two cis 270 degrees. Right? And if I actually like evaluate these, right, if I plug zero in, to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Sine of theta is zero. I'll just write this out. So we have cosine zero plus i sine zero, right? This is equal to zero. This is equal to one. This gives me two. If I go down here to 180 degrees, right? This gives me two cis of, uh, or cosine of 180 degrees, and then plus i sine 180 degrees. And this is still equal to zero, but this is equal to negative one. So now I get negative two. So these are the two real roots that we are familiar with. And then we get two new ones, right? We get two times cosine of 90 degrees plus I sine of 90 degrees, right? So that's a cool one. This is a purely imaginary root where I have two uh, I basically here because uh, cosine of 90 is going to be equal to zero. Sine of 90 is one. So I get two I. If I do 2i times itself four times, this is going to give me 16, right? And by the same logic, I go down here, you can plug stuff in, you're just going to get negative 2i. Uh, because i to the fourth, right, is just positive 1. Um, and so then it kind of goes away when I'm doing a fourth power. So we get two purely real roots and two purely imaginary roots uh, for 16 that we couldn't have gotten if it weren't for this, this method in the complex plane. Okay? So again, key takeaways. If you're doing the nth root of a complex number, there will be n roots. Those roots will be evenly spaced. Uh, you only need to find one to start. And once you found one of them, you just add and say, okay, well, the first one is at zero. I know they're going to be spaced evenly. So you can figure out how many degrees are going to be separating them. And then just add this to generate all the others. Uh, and that's how you do powers and roots in the complex plane.